So this right here is a C1 Library of Congress. And if you don't know what that is, it's a cassette player that was originally made for the visually impaired to listen to audiobooks. The cool thing about it is that it allows you to change the speed and the tone of the cassettes you put into it. It can actually record, so I have a, an additional uh, cassette recorder that I use to burn audio to a cassette. Then I can put it in here and I can uh, play back and record uh, from a normal cable. It isn't mono, so there is, that is a downside, but it makes some incredible sounds. So we're just going to dive right into it. I'm going to show you some of what it can do, and then I'm going to give you the sounds that I recorded off this thing for free in the download link below. Hey everyone, Andrew Southworth, GeneraStudios.com, here to teach you how to make your own music and help you achieve your musical goals. So as I mentioned in the intro, this video is all about the C1 Library of Congress cassette player. And I'm just going to dive right in, I'm going to click play, and you're going to hear some of the sounds that I pre-recorded. They're from my acoustic guitar sound design thing. Um, and I'm going to play them at half speed. Cassettes usually run at 1 and 7 eighths I think, inches per second of tape, but I'm going to play it at half that speed, and I'll play with some the knobs so you can see what it actually does. So as you can see, uh, it's very, very slow. Now I can't actually double it. That's what it originally was. And that's what I'm making it. Now I can also go in. And change the speed variably. unit and you are running with very slow tape speed so there is a bit of wobble when you're changing but if you're setting it up ahead of time it can actually be very cool. So the next sound here is that effect sound that I originally had and I'll use this to show you this tone knob. Basically this just filters out some high end but which ends up being that it's filtering out the noise that's introduced from this old unit. So this is what happens when you put a cell phone next next to an analog uh, source that is receptive to this. So obviously this thing wasn't properly EMI shielded, um, but it's, it's old and it wasn't really meant for high quality audio. So I learned that the hard way when I was trying to record like an hour's worth of stuff back through this thing for audio processing and it was all ruined because it had those random pops. Um, even this far away, it's still picking up some stuff from my phone. So it seems to be fine in Wi-Fi, but yeah. All right, so next I'm gonna record all the sounds that I put on this into my DAW, and then we're going to take a look at them inside the DAW and kind of show you some things that I like to do with them. All right, and we're back in the box, so I've recorded this stuff here at half speed, and I'm just gonna start chopping things up. So I'll make a couple new tracks, and yeah, there'll be audio, and I'm gonna zoom into this and find where I started. All right, so I forgot that one of the nuisances with uh, working with this type of stuff is lining it up can be kind of a pain uh, because when you record this stuff, it, it doesn't really line up exactly as how you record it just because the tape speeds are kind of wobbly and again we're dealing with stuff that's decades old so Let's see if I got this right all right so that's probably good enough for now so I'm gonna turn off the uh, metronome so i actually recorded this part twice and so that means i have to line it up twice so i'm about to do a uh, edit for you so you don't have to watch this painful painful process all right that might be close enough so what i'm going to try doing is i'm going to pan one all the way to the left pan the other all the way to the right and i'm going to deactivate this original one and let's see what that sounds like So let's look at the waveform a little bit. I'm going to throw EQs on there anyways. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of low end. And it makes sense because I did slow everything halfway down. So basically, all the frequencies get scaled in half. So we'll just put an EQ8 on there and just get rid of a lot of the low end. And still going to keep it pretty gritty. Awesome, and I'm going to try getting the bass part that I had originally gotten in MIDI, and I'm just going to slow that to half speed and put that over this.
perfect. Finally, we have some drums. <laughs> oh man, it's funny how painfully slow it is. So uh, I'm gonna have to make a new track here. Remember this is in mono, so I'm losing a little bit of the stereo. If I was doing this all the way, the right way, what I would do is I would record every single one of those layers separately so I could convert it back to stereo after the fact, but obviously I did not do that. See how that sounds in the context. So that sounds cool. Now I want to try grabbing this and actually just speeding it up by a factor of two because that should bring us back to what we had originally. And I'm also going to bring it up an octave because now that should be the original pitch. And I'll keep it in beats just, just to see. Um, actually, no, I can't do beats because that won't actually pitch anything. So let's see what that sounds like. So that is very interesting. I'll show you the original just for uh, comparison. So this is the one recorded on the C1 Library of Congress. Now going to the original. <laughs> uh. So first glaring mistake. Um, Remember when I mentioned that the the speed of the tape is very variable, which is why it's it doesn't really line up exactly. You have to scale things. Um, that's going to happen to the pitch too. So I can't really just scale by an octave. So I can do this by ear. Uh, I could go in and look at a meter, but I'll do it by ear first. There we go. That's pretty good. So it was uh, forty three cents off, which is. <laughs> Again, very, very interesting. It also sounds very muffled. Which makes sense, because I recorded that at half speed, so all the frequencies got shifted down, and when I shifted it back up in software, it, it can't reliably recreate those frequencies. Also, there's the factor of the tape, you know, being analog tape. It could be muffling those, those frequencies in some way. It is a very old machine that introduced a lot of noise, and I did filter out the noise by putting on the low, because the noise was just overwhelming. You can even still hear it in the back of this. So, yeah. So I did also record some one-shot drums in here. And then I did also record the bass. Which in hindsight was stupid because it was already a sub, so this is like uh, an octave below sub, but um, you can see I just kind of gave up at the end. This is what it looks like when you turn off the cassette machine while it's playing. It does this crazy, like, I mean, I guess when you have an audio file, you're really just reading uh, voltage over time, I guess. So this is just kind of how the, the voltage goes when you turn it off, which is very, very interesting and a little startling when you see it for the first time. Um, but yeah, so there's one shots in here, there's the drums, there's the effects thing, and there's two versions of that main pad sound. And I'm putting this in here so that if you want, when you download the project files, you can go ahead and make a drum set out of these sounds. You can chop them up however you want, and you have access to this actual part originally, and then you have access to uh, this thing that I made here. So I'm going to uh, spice this up a little bit more, and then you're going to take a listen to it as well after my outro. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you might like this Music Experiments playlist as well. And also, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing because I upload videos every single Tuesday and Friday. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.